Rock, one, two, three. All right, have a seat. You ready to rock and roll? We've got the greatest job in the world. Would you agree? And that's, that's what it should be like right there every time you get ready to rock and roll on the, on the floor. Is it's, it should be energy. It's fun. It's exciting what you do. Wouldn't you agree? OK. I have in front of you two of Mr. Silver's favorite ads. These are ads that he runs. Uh, whether it be the paper, whether it be direct mail, flyers, ad cards, these are ads that he, he's running. Tell me something about what you can see from the type of school he runs by looking at the ad. Kids. Kids, targeting kids, family. sir. Family oriented. Family, family. Yes, sir. That was it? Same thing? Yes. Very professional. Very professional. You know what professionalism builds? Does anybody know what it builds? Mr. Elder spoke very well on it this morning. It builds trust. That's what professionalism builds. It builds trust. Because your standards are so high, I can trust that you're going to take care of my child. Because I can see. Do not ever underestimate if a school should look clean or not. That's a given. That goes that we don't even need to talk about that. Because professionalism builds trust. From the cleanliness of your school, to the way your instructors look, to the way they smell, to the uniforms you choose, all of the above is very much needed because we're building trust. We're in a relationship when a, when a student joins my school, and we're in a long relationship. I'll be in a relationship with my students longer than most of my friends will last because we're going to black belt, okay? And we're going black belt and beyond, correct? So I need, to, I need to make sure that I'm integrating in my program all of the relationship building elements that go along with that. Does that make sense? Yes, That's just something to think about. What else do you get from the ads? What would, is he targeting? Who's he targeting? Basketball stars, football stars? Who's he, he's targeting? Well, kids, keep in mind, kids don't read the paper too much. So just, who's he targeting? He's targeting the parents. What about the ad, it, what would draw a parent to want to come to the school? What is it? Yes, sir. They look like they're having a good time. I love this ad. That's, yeah, that's just an incredible ad. That says so much without saying, you know, without any writing. Um, anything else? What else? Yes, sir. The benefits. Now, to me, it sounds like you've been to a seminar before. That word benefits. Can you just, for the, the sake of the crowd, what do you mean when you say benefits? Right. It doesn't say anything about contract amount, does it? Doesn't say anything about down payments, does it? Because see, that's a benefit to you, isn't it? But it's not a benefit to the reader, is it? What you see on the ad is the benefits to the readers, to the moms. Is self-discipline a benefit to a parent? All in favor, say aye. aye. All right. How about courtesy and respect? All in favor, say aye. aye. How about self-control? Aye. Aye. How about self-defense? Aye. How about the gaining confidence? Aye. Okay. Notice there's even. There's even a note to the parents. So he's telling you who's reading it. It's the parents who are reading it. So what I'm getting at is the ad is geared towards a specific reader. Do they call? Do they call? They do call. These ads are proven to work. They call. And the phone calls come in. And for some schools, boy, do they come in. They come in a lot. With Mr. Vanover, is there, is there a representative from Mr. Vanover School here? What you guys do, like 96 contracts or something like that in a month or something? That is just crazy. You know that, right? That's crazy, right? OK. It makes us all feel bad. We appreciate that. OK? <laughs> That's awesome, though, because why? He goes there, he shows the benefits of the program, phone calls come in. Do parents want that? Let me tell you something. In my experience of working with school systems and so forth and so on, it, this is just, it's not that the parents don't know how to do this, and that sometimes may be the case, but they're looking for uh, to join a team where we can all kind of collaborate together to benefit the child. And this is what they're looking for right here. Did I see a hand up real quick? Did I? I thought I saw. Yes, sir. Do you have a question? No. Specializing in kids. That's right. It's geared towards letting the parents know that this is specifically for kids because it's karate for kids. So I feel like you know I'm going to a specialty school. Okay. 
So now they come into school, and what do they take? What do they take when they come into karate school? And you're probably thinking, I think an intro. What do we do in the intro? Teach them how to break boards, talking about on their black belt test, how they got to do that, you know, two-mile run and punt it. Well, yeah, we, we basically show them. Hey, let me, let, me, let me show you, let me show you, let me show you how karate teaches us. See, we're not going to talk about it. Let me show you how we teach this. And then the parent, was the parent? Oh, this is so wonderful. And then they sign up, right? Isn't that the truth? And then they get on the floor. All right. And now you turn it. We, we got one of our instructors. We call him Sarge. Because now you turn, you turn into Sarge. So you want to do martial arts, huh? And now we take him through the old, how we've been taught. And haven't really had the opportunity to evaluate how we've been taught. You got to remember everything that you've been taught serves a purpose. And you have to evaluate that now and find out what that purpose is. And is that purpose congruent with your purpose? I've done that. And it's uh, extremely um, gratifying to know that, you know, the purpose of my school and what we're trying to accomplish through the school. Okay? And we have to make sure, the point is, is that instructors, we have to make sure that we're continuing the education of the benefits once they get on the floor. Would you agree with that? Would you agree with that? Yes, sir. But you got to take a, a child psychology course in order to do this, right? Yes, sir. No, it's easy. Matter of fact, we're going to do it today. Now, you might be wondering, why did we start off with that little circle thing? Well, not only is that one of the things that we like to do a lot in our SWAT class, because it teaches the kids how to practice uh, demonstrating in front of crowds. You know, you get up there in front of everyone. But also, we got some skilled people here this weekend. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, sir. We really do. And I, and I think, and I credit you of your skills. I think that's an incredible thing. And you shouldn't be ashamed. Oh, you know, shucks, I don't want to show off. Show off as if you're looking to get something from it, inspire something different. I get inspired when I see you guys go up there and do it. How many saw that and like, oh man, I gotta train harder. You know what I mean? You see that going on, yeah, that's a, you're inspiring us, that's awesome. Okay, so we start off with that and you got a chance to show your skills. How many of you, when you got up there, wanted to do your best? How many of you, can, matter of fact, can we do this? Can we have the people who, who did that little circle thing? Can you come up here with me? Come on up here, we'll just kind of hang out. Why don't you guys have a seat right here? Can we give these guys a hand one more time? Yeah. All right. Have a seat real quick. You guys can have a seat, OK? I'm just curious. Did anybody have butterflies? Uh, OK, I had butterflies setting the thing up. OK. Um, real quick, how many of you honestly gave your best when you were up there? You know, are you just kind of like, you know, I'm just going to go through it, bang it out a little bit? Or some of you really, really going for it? How many of you gave your best? OK, so we got quite a few gave your best. Why? Why did you give your best? I'm just curious. Okay, representing, did you hear that? His thinking, he's representing his school, he's representing his school to people who, he'd be a good demo guy because he's got that thinking going on. What did you do, what was going, what was going on with your thinking? Because why, what do you believe about giving your best? Right? Okay. Sure, so somehow he's relating in his mind that if I give my best, I'm becoming my best. Anyone agree with them? Yeah. Okay, if you figured out another way to become your best by, by not giving your best, you need to let us know, okay? Or write a book, you probably sell thousands of copies. But from what I've been taught since a little, the only way you're gonna become your best is give your best. That's the only way. Anything else? Yes. It was worth doing the challenge, you like the challenge. You like challenges, why? What do challenges mean to you? All right, so in his mind, challenges means I become better. You, you got this? Now you probably, anyone still wondering where we're going with this? Just curious, anybody, you're right on track with me? Okay, cool. In your school, the right thing to do is to teach benefits. That's the right thing to do. Why? Because that's what you've been advertising. You've been advertising to the general public that your school builds this stuff. Now, how does our schools build this stuff? Honestly speaking, how many of you would say, come into the karate school, you've already had the seeds of discipline? when you join the martial arts. You are already pretty disciplined, honestly. Put your hand up. Okay, now if the camera wants to kind of just pan around and check that out, how many would say that, you know, they're pretty, they may not been, make their bed up every morning, but they grew up in a very disciplined household. They knew that they couldn't get away with much. They didn't mind and start the breathing down their neck because it was no different than home. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay, now look around. How many people would just, you know, really wild and the parents totally out of control and karate kind of helps you gear that. Okay, now notice slightly, slightly less, slightly less. 
So my question is that, were you taught these qualities or did you already have them and you just found an avenue to put them into? Do you hear what I'm saying? See, there's a difference when it comes to teaching benefits. We want to teach it. I want to teach benefits. I don't want to just expect them. I want to teach them. And there's a dramatic difference. How do we teach them? Well, first of all, what are benefits? I'm not going to write them down, but they're right there. These are some really good benefits. Self-discipline, courtesy, and respect. All right, you ready? Take out your notepads, because you're going you're gonna to want to learn this formula. We have each one of us, especially if you came from the old school, each one of us is a walking civil war. You know what I mean by a civil war? One side of you, you want to develop great martial artists, the old school martial arts. Train, train, train. How many, how many are with me on that? How many got that little side doing? You know, how many of you, if not again, that's it, we're just gonna go back to the old way. How many are with me? Come on, come on, come on. You can raise your hand when you get back in your hotel room by yourself if you don't want someone to see you, okay? The other side of you is really into this. This is cool stuff, you know? Impact the community, empower people, I like that. How many got that side of them as well? Okay, now if you didn't raise your hand, either you didn't understand the question or you're really tired, okay? Either you want to develop hardcore or you're really into this new stuff. Well, that's where I am. I'm right there. I, and what I mean by hardcore, I don't mean the attitude. I mean just, you know, a great quality student. I want to develop both. I want physically a great quality student, okay? But I also want the character. You know what I mean? I'd like to really make an impact on their character. So how do we do that? Well, this is what they say. We're going to work backwards. How many of you, okay, would agree that your attitude affects your performance? Okay? Now put your hands down real quick. What I mean is that, you ever have those days you don't know what happened, but you just got up in a really good mood? And just, you know, you realize that there's people overseas and they're in war right now and they're away from their families and I'm not there. And yet I'm complaining, what is my deal? And you just wake up, you just, man, I feel so good. You get to your school and you just, it hits you that you got a great school and you got a great job and people love you and they respect you and they need you and you're in such need and demand. And, oh man, you ever have one of those days? So you, you never, the other people never had that day before? Man, can you guys give them a hug real quick? Because they, <laughs> how about, how, anybody ever had that day real quick? All right, cool. So here, here's what we got. We got superior performance, and it's affected by our what? Our attitude. Now, before we go any further, if anyone disagrees with this, here's what you said, that your attitude does not affect your performance. And I'm going to disagree with you, because even if you had a bad, you say, well, I've had bad days before, and right before I walk on that floor, I change it, change what? I change my mood, you change your attitude. So you change your performance because you change your attitude. That's the way it is. That's as simple as that. Now, what affects our attitude? Well, how many would consider that thinking is what affects their attitude? Would anyone agree with me on that? Because you woke up, you're in a great attitude. Why? Because you're thinking differently than you were thinking before. How many are with me? Cool. Raise your hand say aye. Aye. All right, so it's your thinking. Well, we're gonna go one more step to the formula. And this is what the experts say, okay? What affects our thinking? Anybody know? What affects our thinking? What is it? Hmm, close. That can help. That can certainly help. It can help. Yes, sir? Okay, that's your thinking. Your thinking is your confident attitude because of my thinking about myself. But what's this very first step? Because, my friend, this is where we have a job. Right there. Oh, someone's on to it. Education, which is what goes into your mind. So what goes into my mind affects my thinking. My thinking affects my attitude. My attitude affects my performance. What is it that you want from your students? How many of you would like a good quality black belt? How many would like a good quality black belt? Isn't that over here? Isn't that over here? Do you see this right here? Do you see how many steps are before that even happens? Now, I want you to think of your C students, okay? Go for it. In fact, I want you to take your pen out real fast. Write three of them down. 
What does a C student? Don't volunteer. Back in a room. A attendance is on and off, inconsistent. They're there, they're not there. You know, they they're really hard to get going. Write three of them down. Come on, I'll give you, I can't do it, it's being taped. One of my students might get up with this tape. <laughs> Why do you call me a C student? Don't want that. But you gotta write them down. Tom, Patrick, Steven. By the way, those are A students in our schools. So I'm just kind of flipping around. Okay? All right. They're a C student. They're not, their performance is not very exciting. <coughs> What's their attitude? Quickly, can someone give me just, I don't know, they're your students. What's their attitude? Down, just kind of like, uh, draggy, maybe don't want to be there. Selfish, got a group, bad attitude. Hey, what's their thinking? Why is that dude down? Just because, I don't know, he just, he's down, he has no idea. Possessed, I'm possessed, I'm down, I have no idea. There's a reason why he's down. I wonder what his thinking is. I wonder what his thinking is. Do you have any idea what his thinking is? You do, why? A lot of it has to do with his parents. So he's kind of thinking that he's in a bad situation, he's in a negative environment. You know, he, he, a lot of things are stacking up against him. So he's thinking, his attitude. How do you change that? How did Mr. Elder do it to you today? We're in that room, and at the very end, he said, basically, you're gonna get out of this what you put into it. Have that attitude of expectancy. Go looking for something this weekend. Don't. It's amazing that, you know, we're taught as much as to go after things, and yet when we go to business seminars, we kind of sit back and relax and say, well, you know, let's just see what happens. That's, that's a contradiction. That's not the way I've been taught. Go after things. So he's going to change your performance. Well, he's definitely changing your attitude, and he did that because he's changing your thinking. He's getting you to think about different things, and how did he do it? He's the one who started it. He put the thinking into your head. Does that make sense? This is what I've had the privilege to learn from the experts. This is what they say. So I start thinking, hmm, I want a great quality black belt. So then I get on this little thing of as I start getting A students, and I start asking them, what goes on between your ears? You heard one guy say today that I become my best by giving my best. Isn't that a great message of the week? I become my best by giving my best. If you want to write this down, what that's called is called self-reliance. What does it mean to rely on somebody? Have you ever relied on somebody and you've been burnt? That's a lovely feeling, isn't it? Have you ever relied on someone and they came through? I mean, you were really hanging on and they came through. Isn't that a great feeling? Well, to a certain extent, and I'm not telling that any man or woman's an island. I'm not saying that. Don't hear what I'm, what I'm not saying. What I am saying is that children need to realize that it's their responsibility to make themselves better that an instructor can teach them, an instructor can inspire them, but ultimately, they make the decision if they're gonna become good or not. That is their decision. How many agree with that? How many of you would love to have your students thinking that? Wouldn't that be awesome? Come on now, let me see your hands come up. Think about it, your students are gonna train realizing it's my decision to make myself better. My instructor can teach me, he can inspire me, but ultimately, it's my decision if I'm gonna be better or not. Wouldn't you like to have your students think that? Then guess what we gotta do? Guess what we gotta do? We just gotta teach it to them. That's what we gotta do. And we're gonna teach it to them through the curriculum, and we're gonna teach it to them through drills. Are you with me so far? How many of you are better today than you were when you first started karate? Now that's a ridiculous question, right? How many of you are further than you ever thought you'd be? You kind of step back like, whoa, like, you know, I used to do fighting on the circuit, and every now and again you just do a kick, and like you didn't even think about doing it. It just came out, you ever have one of those? And you kind of step back and go, oh man, look at me, that was awesome. And then the guy gets ticked over and kills you, no. So anyways, you know what I'm saying? You, you're just like, whoa, you know, I didn't realize I'd get this far. How many are with me on that? So what you're saying is that you've got more potential than you realize, right? Yes, right? Yes, sir. Funny thing about potential though, it's like, think about a, like a, a cake mix box sitting on a shelf. It's got potential to be a cake, doesn't it? But, it doesn't do anything until you start using those ingredients, right? That's the deal, man. We gotta use what you got in there. That's how we're gonna make you better. Now, what are they learning? Well, this month they're gonna learn self-reliance and potential. And truly, I'm, I'm actually just giving you what we're teaching this month in our school. What else could we do? Self-discipline. Well, what is self-discipline? Doing things without being told, right? Well, why is that important? Well, because this is the way it goes down, okay? On your black belt test, 
Here's my position on your black belt test. I'll be sitting behind a table. I'll be on a board with a bunch of black belts. I'll have sheets in front of me, and I'll be calling out commands. That's what I get to do on your test. So who's it up to now? We go back to self-reliance. It's up to you. Not up to me. When do you think you're going to learn that habit? The night before your black belt test? No, we start doing that now, right? The more you can do things without me telling you, and you're training to be a black belt. How many realize that on their black belt test, it's up to them to do it? These are great things. Think about what we're teaching these kids. These are good things, right? How many of you know people that just need to take a little responsibility for their actions? They're good at the blame game. They blame everybody else but themselves. How many of you know people like that? Okay? You know what I'm saying? You with me? Okay. So what are we doing? We're teaching benefits. How am I, how are we going to teach benefits? Mr. Silva had asked me, he says, I want you to have a handout. I said, Mr. Silva, I don't really want to do a handout. And he said, why? Because I've done seminars before, I give them handouts, I give them lesson plans, I tell them what to do. I said, you know what? After the lesson plans are over, they call up, so I need more lesson plans. I'd rather do to you what he did to me, which is simply just showing me how to do this. And once you kind of just absorb it, and you kind of think about it, and you're like, yeah, that does make sense. You get the idea? OK, let's have some fun. Let's put the pads away, and let's jump up. Okay, let's do this. When I say one, you're gonna do a back fist reverse punch. Ready? And one! There you go. Two! Three! Four! Five! Speedy got set. Let's see real quick. Ooh, that was good. Big hand, yeah. Okay. This is gonna challenge you because you're all very good. You know that, right? How can we make that better? If there's one thing that we could do but we're not doing, and I know it's almost perfect, but if there was one thing, what would it be? Put more weight into it. So what he's saying is make sure when you back fist, really, you know, we do what's called a forward stance or a forward bow. Really lock out that back leg and kind of twist that hip. And really just kind of, you know, lock that thing out there. You got it? Okay, yes, jump up. Here we go. Let's try that. All right? Now, it's your idea, so come here. Yes, I need your help. You kind of look at him and tell me if it, if it actually works. Ready? Guard stance. Yes, back fist, reverse punch, trying to make it a little better. And go! Yes, go! Yes, go! Yes, Pretty good set. Yes, sir. Yeah. Good job, man. Good, good answer. Drop down one knee, quick. One more, give me one more. I tell you what I like to see. Make it look real now, okay? Make it look real like you really had to use this. Right. Don't pull it back. All right. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Anybody fighter in here? Yeah, we look for that all the time, don't we? When the guy glued like this, we have psychic. Okay, jump up. Go this. Ready? So we're going to just kind of push it off. Boom, boom, and make it look real. Ready? And one! Make it look real. Ready? Two! Oh, I like that. Three! Pretty good set. Woo! Nice job. Good job, good job. Come here, come here, come You're the man. I love this guy. You face these guys, ready? You mind doing that? Car stands. But sometimes, sometimes kids get you know, shy when they come up from a crowd. So he's going to do it, but you're going to key out. All right, so he's going like, you got to go real loud. Ready? One! Two! Three! Yeah! Awesome. Awesome, man. All right, now truthfully, did your back fist reverse punch get better? Sure. Truthfully. I mean, some of you being black belts, you know, you've already, you did it right off the, the bat. But did it, did it get better? Honestly, come on, don't tell me what I want to hear. Honestly, did it get better? Okay. Did, what's that? You gave it 100% right off the bat. Did anybody get better? Your heart was in it. So it got better. Okay, so it got better. How do we do that? Do we change your attitude about it? How do we do that? You change your thinking. How do we do that? I challenge you, right? Yes, sir. Let's pretend we're still in class. Okay, yes, let's go back to class. Sir. And I'm going to tell you, give yourself a big hand. Nice job. Nice job. Nice job. You know, I'll tell you one of the things I was really impressed about with that back fist reverse punch, and that is that you made it better. When you come to class, one of two things has got to happen. You either have to learn something new, and that time we're, we're taking it a little slower, or you got to get better at something. Other than that, you wasted your time. The only thing you've benefited from this is you get a check mark on your card, or you get your, your card scanned to the computer. That's great, but you're not getting any better. Now, how many came to get better? Sir. OK, so great. You get to go home now and brag to everyone that you came down to Orlando and you took a UP convention. But truthfully, if you don't get anything out of this and you don't go back a little better, you've wasted your time. The only thing that you're going to have is notes on paper and a nice little whatever card of you tonight at Pleasure Island or you know, Universal Studios. You didn't really get any better, though. 
You understand what I'm saying? Sir. The way that we get better is by improvement. That is the way we get better. That is the only way we get better. You don't get better unless you improve. Now, whose responsibility is it to improve? Now, if you disagree with what you just said, here's what you said. You said it's my responsibility to make you better. That's impossible. The only way I can make you better is if I do it for you, providing I'm better than you are. Other than that, whose responsibility is it to make you better? Your own. You with that? Sir. It's your own responsibility to make yourselves better. I can teach you and I can inspire you, but I can't do it for you. Ultimately, it's up to you. Who's ready for that? Sir. Good, Sir. Good, news, good news too, right? Because sometimes kids think that's a real drag. Oh, man. Think about it. Think about if it was, if it was my responsibility to make you better. Suppose you want to be real good and I don't. You'd be bumming, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, I want to be good. Well, I don't. Well, I want to be good. Well, I don't. Good thing it's up to you, isn't it? All right, jump up. Sir. So what do we do? What do we just do there? See, do you see how you teach benefits? It's as simple as that. Are you guys getting that? Tell me some things that people join martial arts to develop, OK? Self-respect. Now, I'm not the world's greatest speller, OK? So it can work. I can spell respect, obviously. All right, and I can spell self. I thought that was moving. What else? By the way, you ever hear that Cordy saying that if you don't learn to love yourself, you can't love other people? Yeah. And by the way, the experts say that's true, so this is very important. If you don't like yourself, you're going to have a hard time with other people. Yes, yes, yes. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. Confidence. Oh, boy. Here we go. Uh, cool. Anything. Self-defense. Anything else? Self-esteem, that's huge. Oh. If you need me to, because I know you can't read my writing. My staff can't read my writing. I can't even read my writing. OK? Discipline. 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 Respect. <coughs> Commitment. Stick to it. Let's just say stick to it. Goals. OK, that's enough. <laughs> you guys get the idea? OK, what do we got to teach them? Well, certainly we're not going to just have them take a black belt test on that, are we? Is that your black belt test? They just take a written questionnaire and give you the definition? I got my black belt. Can't find my way out of a paper bag, but I got it. OK? No, you got to teach them some stuff. So what do you got over here? I don't know. Universals. You know, universals. You know what that's supposed to say, right? One through six, OK? What else? Basics. Basics. OK, cards, self-defense. Now, I'm running out of time, so I'm just going to kind of, this, this usually, truthfully, for me to teach this appropriately, usually takes me two to three days to actually walk you through it, walk you through it, walk you through it, walk you through it, until you really got a good understanding of how to do it. But here's what we do. We always look at our physical curriculum first. Why? Because I understand the balance. I'm an instructor, too. I have the balance. The kids got to learn the material. I got to test them on it. It is karate. But I also, truthfully for me, this is where my heart's at. I, I like teaching this stuff. Why? Because I like teaching character development. You know, I like seeing, I like thinking of my school as an institute or an academy that's based on education that really they can't get anywhere else. Now, I see a lot of schools now starting to implement this kind of stuff in their curriculum. But really, how many people would, would agree with me quickly, just deferring for a second, that you need this stuff to be successful? How many people would agree? Yeah, you'd agree with that. Now, how many while you were in school took a course that taught this stuff? A specific course that taught this stuff. OK, so we got one. One. So let me, let me get this straight. We all agree that we need this stuff to be successful, yet we don't have a course that teaches it. Do you see a problem there? You see, so along comes martial arts. And martial artists are starting to figure out how to actually bridge the gap, how we can use this as a metaphor to teach this. Now that's what I do it for, and that's me personally. I'm not telling you to do that. I personally use martial arts as a metaphor to teach this stuff. Why? Because my heart's in this. What would I recommend to you? If you want to have great black belts, then you're going to need to use this stuff to get the quality 
out of them. Because the kids are gonna be A students, the kids that already have the thinking. The kids that, I don't know where they linked it up, they got a, a football coach, a basketball coach, the parents are just on the ball and they're aggressive and they've taught the child and they've linked it up in their mind and they know that at the karate school, they have to give their best to be their best. Those are the kids in your school that are gonna make progress. All the other kids, they're just not gonna do it because they don't have the thinking. So what do we do? You wanna inspire people, you wanna motivate people, you teach them the proper thinking that goes between the ears. And we, we use that again and again and again. Hey, how can we make that better? Well, let me ask you a question. I mean, every time I see you perform, you're always giving 100%. Why do you do it? And you're always gonna hear the same responses, because I wanna be my best. Let me get this straight. In your mind, you, giving your best is your best? Yes, sir. But you agree with them? Yes, sir. Who wants to be their best? Oh, that's right, you don't wanna be your best. You just kinda wanna go through life not being your best, not being second best, so when you're at the end of your life, you can look at yourself in the mirror and go, second best, man, proud of you. That's what you want to do. So don't you think we should start building that habit now? And we work it at the karate school. Do you follow this? Do you see where we're going? This makes sense, right? So what you do is you just sit down and you come up with Universal One. You say, all right, today, when we're doing our drills with Universal One, you know, we got to really start talking more about confidence. How can we do that? Well, you got your black belts in there. You got your instructors, right? Watch this. Who's confident? Nobody in here? <laughs> Fake it till you make it. Okay? No. <laughs> you confident? You're pretty confident. Why? Why are you confident? Ah. Been doing it for a while. Because confidence, he creates confidence, right? All right, so he's been, so uh, reps. Let's just say, I can spell that one. Okay? Anybody else confident? Confidence. What you been taught? <coughs> Role model. What, how did he make you more confident? Believe in yourself. Why, why believe in yourself? Why, why do you have to believe in yourself? Because that, that's, the, that's the ground that produces confidence. Well, let's take the opposite of it. Doubt yourself, question yourself, criticize yourself. Oh, you're gonna be real confident now. It don't work that way, right? So we gotta make sure what I call planting good seeds. Let's just say that, planting good seeds. So, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do Universal One, and we're gonna talk about repetition, okay? You get the idea? All right, no pads away. Let's give it a shot. This is what Universal One looks like. It's a back fist reverse punch, and then it's gonna be a roundhouse kick. And I can kick real high up here, but this thing stopped me from doing it. Is that cool? <laughs> here we go. Ghost dance. All right, when I say one, back fist, two, reverse punch, three, roundhouse kick. Be, be conscious of the person in front of you. Most likely, they're gonna be leaning back, okay? Ready, and one. Two, three, and go back, and go back, ready? And hey, God, come on, give me some feeling here. Ready, one, two, three, back one more time, one more time, ready? And one, two, three, that's, ooh, we got some good kickers here. All right, go down one here real quick. Let's pretend that this is a, a teenage crowd. Those are always the easiest to teach, right? Sorry, teenagers. Uh, how many of you got to do oral reports in school? Okay, let me guess. You get up in front of the crowd and this is your deal. Um, imagine if I did this. My name is uh, Paul Garcia and I'm gonna be speaking today on teaching benefits at the uh, karate school. Will that work? Now you gotta do it what? You gotta be assertive when you speak. You gotta be powerful. You gotta be strong, right? Okay, jump up, go back. Fly that to your trainer, ready? Go stand. You gotta be assertive, you gotta be strong, you gotta be powerful, ready? We're gonna do it by numbers, and one! But assertive, you gotta give everything you got, everything you got. Ready, two, three! Yes, big head. Drop down, drop down. Now, you're at your school and you see them, and they're doing something incorrectly. Well, that goes back to congruency. So you say, now nah, you, you got the idea, but the last thing in the world, we don't get confident by being assertive, strong, and powerful, and having the wrong information. Because then you just become obnoxious. You think you know everything, okay? So what we gotta do is make sure you're doing it right. Would you agree? Sir. Now what are we doing? Man, we're doing both. We're teaching this, and we're teaching, what do we say? Confidence, you follow that? Sir. I say, man, can you give me like 40, 50 of these, and I'll be all set for a couple of years? How I did this is Mr. Silva did, Mr. Silva gave me the seed. Many years ago, 
Mr. Silver gave me part of this formula. Now, when I say part of it, it's because I'm my own researcher. I found out the rest. Okay, but basically he said when you teach it to them and you get them exercise in the class, we're gonna build a black belt. And that's what that's the seed that he gave me, and that's always been my thinking when I walk on the floor. I've realized that if I don't teach this, now listen, instructors, and we're gonna break. If I don't teach this stuff, the only black belts you're gonna have are your A students. Do you understand that? The kids that are probably just like you, that's why you're here. And you go, I ain't got a problem with that. Well, the other a students only represents 20 to 30% of a school. So the other 80 and 70%, what can we say you're doing for them? You hear what I'm saying? And you're gonna get both. You're gonna get a great quality black belt and you're gonna be teaching uh, character development and do a tremendous benefit to your community. Okay, does that sound cool? Yeah. If you need more information on this, Mr. Silva's got a whole bunch of stuff on this. He's got an audio tape called Teaching Benefits. Just watch the man teach. He can't teach without teaching a benefit because that's who he is now. Watch people who have large schools. Now you notice on your sheet it said renewals. I told Mr. Silva to do that. I'm going to end with this. He says, but you're not going to do a renewal conference. I said, I know I'm not. My school has almost 450 students in it. The reason why we have that is because majority of our time is spent on this right here. You build a large school, yes, you have to market. Of course you do. You gotta market, you gotta get your word out there, you gotta let the public know what you're doing. But you build a school by keeping students. You don't build a school by getting a bunch of students in and just keep losing them out the door. You build a student a school by keeping your students. And there's not too many people that once they can see you're doing this in your school, they're gonna wanna leave that environment. Do you hear what I'm saying? So I, I'm, I'm telling you, it is worth an investment on your part. If you put your heart into it, you'll find it. You'll discover how to do it. And it's just a, it's a great thing. Okay? All right? You guys are out of here.